Welcome back to episode 87 of the ATD Baseball Podcast. I guess you can call this the uh, trade deadline spectacular reaction <laughs> video, whatever you want to call it. I w- I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to start it right off the top. I was expecting way more fireworks. We got little, mm-hmm. we got some singles and doubles. We got a couple home runs here and there, but. God, I, re- I really expected a little bit more out of some of these teams. But we'll we'll get into that as it goes on. But I'm happy. I'm happy with what my team did. I think they addressed pretty much all their needs. But Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Obviously, it's the first episode back since we got home from Cooperstown. Um, yes, I'm glad we all made it back in one piece. Yes. Uh, there's a few close calls there on the way to the airport, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, other than that, um, made it home safely. The trip was a blast. Absolutely spectacular. The hall of fame treats their media members. Well, I will say that. Yes, they do. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, obviously we have a big, big thing coming up here. Uh, what better way to, you know, get back into the swing of things than the trade deadline. Um, I am with you on this completely. Um, I wish there was bigger names being traded. Like I, like, uh, like you said, like there was a few of them who were like, oh, wow, okay, you know, didn't expect that or, you know, that's a big name, blah, blah, blah. But um, no, I definitely thought there would be more fireworks, more more bigger names on the market um, because there was a lot of rumors. You know, Garrett Crochet, Tarek Skubal, guys like that who are now obviously staying put um, with their respective teams. But shifting to my team, I am not happy with what they did. I need more out of them. So obviously we can get you more like into that Jazz later Shizzle? on. Listen, I like the move, but there needs to be more. We're in a Soto walk here. So it's, you know, anyway, um, yeah, other than that, man, I'm doing great. Uh, back into the swing of things. It took me a while. I will say that. It took me a bit. <laughs> but uh, but I'm finally feeling a little bit. It, it did, man, 100%. Um, not afraid to admit that, but uh, yeah, back into the swing of things. Um, happy to be back doing uh, doing this podcast. I will say that. Oh yeah, it feels normal. It feels feels right. Don't get me wrong. I love when we're together in the same room and you know we're doing stuff. Not what you think, but we're doing baseball related <laughs> stuff. But um, this this is what we're used to. Which, mm-hmm. I mean, it sucks, but seeing each other over yeah. the camera. But mm-hmm. um, those trips will pop up again soon, and uh, oh, yeah. we'll see each other again. And um, But if, it's nice to be home, and this is something that we're used to doing. So, 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, so trade deadline. Uh, we are, it is currently 7.10 Eastern time, 4.10 in the Pacific. Uh, the trade deadline has been over for about an hour now. Um, some teams made moves. Some teams didn't. Some teams held on to their players like I didn't think they would. Um, Kyle, what what deadline move was the biggest? Is it Was it Randy to the Mariners? Was it Jack Flaherty to the Dodgers? Was it – God, I can't believe I'm putting him in here. Uh, Tanner Scott to the damn Padres. Um, which one stood out to you the most? Or is yeah, so, off the board? Yeah, um, real quick, uh, I had mentioned to you that I have a thought on this trade deadline that I oh. kind of want to address here. Holy overpays. Holy shit. It's been nuts, man. The return on some of these players have been downright just ridiculous. Like, it's been, it was crazy to see a lot of what these teams are getting in return. Um, I'm talking to AJ Preller, by the way. Just want to make sure. Just I'll wow. speak to him for that. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from Tanner Scott. I think he's a phenomenal bullpen arm. But when it comes down to it, your 2 3 4 prospects, really? For Tanner Scott? That was a package I was looking for with like a crochet or a scooball kind of move, you know? But. That was definitely one of my thoughts that the biggest thought that I had 
regarding this trade deadline. I thought it was absolutely insane to see some of these returns for these guys. Um, one that really sticks out to me is uh, the Orioles and the Phillies swung a trade for Gregory Soto. It was one of the last trades that happened before the deadline. The Phillies got their number eight prospect in return for Gregory Soto. That's crazy to me. That's just, it's mind-boggling. And uh, yeah, so now that that's out of the way, uh, I'm going to have to say it's kind of lackluster, but Randy, I think he fits that Mariners team so well. Yep. I, I, think, I think that move was phenomenal by the Mariners. Um, it addresses a need. And you get a bat in there with some postseason success. You know, Randy's a guy who... I know I fell in love with Randy Rosarena at the World Baseball Classic. When he put on that Team Mexico uniform and he just did his thing out there with the cowboy boots, the hat. He just he did his whole thing. And that's when I fell in love with him. I think he's a fun player. He's phenomenal. Uh, and when he's, when he's uh, healthy, he can make this Mariners team into a difference maker. And obviously with the lack of production that they're getting out of Julio Rodriguez this season, and overall the entire lineup, Randy was in need. And that's exactly what they got. Um, I'm excited for this move. I think it was the right move. And it kind of started off the trade deadline with a bang. But then after that, kind of just dwindled down. Um, I think it was the biggest move of the deadline. And uh, I also think it's just it's one of the best. I have to say, I, I, I really think the Mariners did an A-plus job on this trade. I really do. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Just so we don't have the same answer. Listen, I know I'm going to be sounding like a complete homer here, but um, the Dodgers getting Jack Flaherty pretty much at the deadline, at the buzzer, it's a big deal. Is it Max Scherzer in 2021? No. Is it you, Darvish, in 2017? No, up until the World Series. Um, but it's it's what the Dodgers needed. And listen, I don't need Jack Flaherty to go out there and be an ace of this team. I don't need I don't need that. Would it be nice? Absolutely. But he is penciled himself in right at the top of that rotation. With Glass now, with uh, Jesus, if Yamamoto comes back healthy, and if he's effective, Yamamoto, Kershaw, see if he continues to pitch well, um, and Gavin Stone. It's not the sexiest group of names, but hey, there's some guys on there that can perform, and Jack Flaherty right now is your two. He's your number two guy right now, which is fine, and he doesn't need to be an ace of this team right now. I don't need it, um, and just so many, un- so many question marks with the other guys. Like I just mentioned, Yamamoto. He's starting to. He's going to throw his first bullpen. I think this weekend. You know, how long does he take before he's ready to go? Bobby Miller and Walker Bueller have been pretty much unusable this season. Uh, Bobby Miller was supposed to have another breakout year this season. Got hurt in the first month. <laughs> Came back in June, and he hasn't been right. Walker Buehler, ever since he came back, he hasn't looked right. He's doing another rehab or something. That's how bad it's been. Um, so a lot of uncertainties in that pitching rotation. And I think Jack Flaherty fills that need just enough. Just enough. Um, it's not Lance Lynn like it was last year. That was the Dodgers' big... Uh, solution to their pitching problem. Lance Lynn, a guy who gave up a billion home runs and melted in Arizona with we all know what happened that day. But um I, I think it has to be Jack Flaherty. Just because of the way this pitching rotation looks right now. A lot of question marks and a lot of guys are unproven. There's a lot of rookies that have been on here. You know, Gavin Stone, he's having a phenomenal year, but I haven't seen it in October yet. I need to see it. And Jack Flaherty, to me, he's he's going to be fine. And I approve and I like the move. I think it's Jack Flaherty. Don't get me wrong. Randy's good. Randy's a great pick, too. And he can possibly change that division. But 
I gotta give it. I gotta be. I'm gonna be a homer here for a second. No worries. I mean, that's that would probably be my number two. Um, you know, Jack Flaherty. He's had a phenomenal year, and exactly what you said. I I think this move. It's not the sexiest name on the market. It's not a crochet. It's not a screwball. But when it comes down to it. It's a guy who fills the need, and I think that's what's most important. You know, the Dodgers have been riddled with injuries in their pitching staff all season long, and Flaherty's a guy who's coming in with a sub-3 ERA and is going to slide right in behind glass now, and I think that's huge because we talked about this in the preseason when the Dodgers traded for glass now. I hope this never happens, but you do need to look at the track record with Tyler Glass now. And at any moment, something like that can happen. And that's exactly what we saw with Yamamoto. And he already and missed the starter, too. Last time. Exactly. Yes. So when it comes down to it, they filled a need. And Jack Flaherty's a guy who's been healthy all season long. And he's been producing at an elite level. Um, kind of went under the radar for me. I didn't realize Jack Flaherty was having that kind of year. I mean, I guess that's what happens when you pitch in Detroit. But when it comes down to it, he's a guy who fills the need for the Dodgers, and I think it's a great pickup. I'm pissed at him because I wanted my Yankees to get him, but um, but yeah, a, a, definitely A-plus for the Dodgers on that one. Some notable other trades, too. Jazz Chisholm to the Yankees. Um, Tanner Scott to Miami. Braves pretty much getting the band back together from three years ago and bringing yeah. back Jorge Soler. Um, Eloy Jimenez to Baltimore, Zach Paredes to Chicago, which I was not expecting that at all. I knew Zach Paredes was going to get dealt, but I thought the Cubs were sellers. Yeah. So much for that. They really didn't sell off anything. Jamison Tyon didn't get traded. Bellinger didn't get traded. Now, Christopher Morrell did get traded, and I know a lot of Cubs fans are not happy about that. Um, obviously, you had you know, both people like, oh, yeah made sense and then you had the others no he's going to be good we should have kept him around um tommy edmund there was a big three-team trade yesterday with the white Sox, cardinals and my dodgers saying goodbye to miguel vargas listen um it sucks i thought that he was going to be the replacement after justin turner left in 2022 and 2023 was horrible mm -hmm. and he came back up after some injuries and he performed okay but was not good in the outfield, and it was just man that they have a quick leash on him. But um, is there? You know what? Let's just jump into this right now. Unless you wanna, unless there's another trade out there that you think is significant, or let, let's do winners and losers. Let's do winners and losers. Okay. I will also say uh, Carlos Estevez went to the yes. Phillies. Yes, yes. That was a big one. Um, yep. Kind of, kind of just some smaller ones. Zach Eflin went to Baltimore. Um, <laughs> honestly, looking at this list, there's not that many big names. Um, obviously, Isak Paredes going to the Cubs was a big one. I thought that was going to be a, a big... Uh, bidding war between our two teams. I thought yep. it was either going to be the Dodgers or Yankees that Paredes was going to get traded to. Uh, and looking at the return on that, I understand why it wasn't the Dodgers or the Yankees. Um, but heading into winners and losers, I guess we can give our winners first, and then we'll go to we'll go to losers. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick two teams that many might be expecting. I am going to pick the Miami Marlins and the Tampa Bay Rays. Yep. And I am doing this because these two teams took full advantage of this trade deadline. There were, like I said, I opened up with the whole overpay thing. The amount of prospects that these two teams got is honestly, it could be franchise changing. You know, I mean, the Rays, and they even got some more. The Rays got uh, Morrell from the Cubs, and I think I think Christopher Morrell is a is a good. He fits Tampa Bay so well. He's that type of player that just seems like he should be a Ray. Um, obviously, there was a slew of prospects going back to both of these teams, um, so I can't really say like you know 
prospect names that I'm completely thinking of, of off the top of my head, but I know there was a slew of prospects going back to both of these teams, and I think both of them took full advantage of the deadline and what the market was like, so I have to give it to them, and I think the Rays could have done even better. They still held on to uh, Yandy Diaz, Pete Fairbanks, guys that they could have traded for a haul. I know Yandy would have gotten a crazy return. So, yep. for me, I'm going to say the winner is the Rays with the Marlins in a very close number two. Um, as an honorable mention, I suppose, I'm going to go with the Toronto Blue Jays. I think this is also another team. They were sellers at the deadline, and they took advantage. Um, I think that trade with Houston put them over the top. I didn't... You say Kikuchi. I mean, listen, he is what he is. But when it comes down to it, there's no reason that haul should have been like that. None at all. Um, so for me, I think the Blue Jays are definitely, they deserve to be mentioned in there. Um, but when it comes down to it, I think the Rays pulled this one off. Losers. White Sox. What the hell was that? Mm -hmm. I don't understand how. Now, listen, maybe the demands of Crochet and maybe the demands of the White Sox turned a lot of teams away. Because I was hearing all this stuff out of Crochet's camp and out of the White Sox that, you know, Crochet won't pitch in the postseason unless he's given a new contract. You know, the White Sox want a haul for him, which rightfully so. Um, it's just they're, they're just a mess right now. They're just a mess, and they had an opportunity to restock the farm system. So I'm not saying – now, they did trade Tommy Pham. They did trade um, Paul Young. I think he's on the White Sox. And, and uh, Eric Fetty, too. Yeah, so they did make moves, but there was two guys. The big fish at the top of the pool, of the pond, Luis Robert Jr., which, yes, for his standards, for having a down year, but there was a lot of teams that would have been interested in Garrett Crochet. Now, I have yep. heard that he's going to be just as valuable in the off season than he was at the deadline. But you, you got to take advantage of that. You got to take advantage of that. Now, another loser. I got to put the Red Sox in there. Mm -hmm. I got to put the Red Sox in there. I was expecting more. Now, part of it is because I don't think the Red Sox didn't think they were going to be in this position, you know, in a wild card spot or close to it. I really thought the Red Sox were going to do more. Yeah. I really thought they were going to go for it. Um, another loser? You know, it sucks because they've been to the ALCS or the World Series the last seven years. I get it. But if you're the, if you're the Houston Astros... You got to do more than that. I'm sorry. Have to do And especially, more. and the trades that they did make, like I just said with Kikuchi. Right. What, what the hell was that? What was that? Like, it's insane. And there's um, clearly, yeah. it's clearly Baltimore Yankees. I, I'll, I'll throw the Guardians slash Royals in there, and then it's everybody mm -hmm. else. If the Houston Astros would have had a bigger deadline. They could have easily put themselves in a position to win this division. They got to put themselves to be the third best team in the American League. But I really expected more. I really expected more out of Houston. And I didn't expect to get for them to give up that much for Kikuchi. 100%. And I will I'll even double down on this too is the there were so many rumors surrounding the uh, the Houston Astros. You had Cody Bellinger in there. You had Pete Alonso. You know you yeah, had yes. exactly. You had these guys who were out there that you could have solidified this lineup. And also your division rival, who you are going head to head yes. with for this division, went out and made the moves they were supposed to. They got Randy Arozarena. They got Justin Turner. For what that means, whatever. But it's these veteran bats in there that you're adding. And the Mariners realized, 
hey, we have a chance for this division, and why not go for it? So they went out and got one of the top outfielders on the market in Randy Rosarena, and they also got Justin Turner, who I believe can still produce at a decent level. And a honestly, what's season season player? Exactly. And what's worse than what you're already rolling out? Like, you're underperforming one through nine. You put these two guys in there, and it could change the entire season around. And the Houston Astros did basically the opposite. So I do agree with you on the Astros. I do think they are a loser, and the other two as well. Uh, I also want to throw in the Milwaukee Brewers here. I don't think that they could have. I don't think they did enough. They got Frankie Montas from what I'm understanding. Um, that's about it. I think I believe that is the one of the only moves that they made. I don't think there was anything significant. Um, but this is one of those teams that I understand you are likely going to win this division. But when it comes down to it, what happens in the postseason then? You know, yeah, you can get there, but you are you're starting to distance yourself from the other competition in the National League. And in a gauntlet of what the National League is, you very easily could have put yourself over the top. I still think this pitching rotation is not good enough to win in October. And yeah, the lineup's there to an extent, but you could have easily added a few bats in there. And I think they didn't address the biggest need, which was the the pitching rotation. Um, So I have to throw them in there. This is a really weird one for me, and it's borderline, but it's a hot take. I thought about them. Thought about them. But this is a hot take for me. Um, I may be in a difference maker. I might get a lot of shit for this. But I'm going to throw the Philadelphia Phillies in here. Ooh, wow. And I'm going to tell you why. I like Carlos Estevez. I think that was a bold move, and I think it's one that needed to be made. However, Austin Hayes was your only bat added to this lineup. This lineup, yes, it is good. Don't get me wrong. They they obviously have the best record in baseball for a reason. I get that. But I still don't think when it comes down to it, I'm I'm taking the Dodgers over the Phillies. Oh, wow. When it comes down to it, this is a team not saying that there's many holes on this team because there's not, but they are clearly one and two with the Dodgers in the National League. I am never going to take that away from them, but I would have liked to see a big move made by this team. Go get a Luis Robert Jr. Go get a Randy Arozarena. Go get some sort of big name. Get another bat in there. And then that would have solidified that lineup for me, one through nine, one hundred percent. And I like the moves they made, but it just wasn't enough for me. And I feel like in, like I said, the gauntlet of the National League, obviously the Mets are in there now. the The Braves are give or take. We'll, we'll see where that ends up. But these are teams that you know, once October hits, you never know. And I'm, like I said, I'm still taking the Dodgers over the Phillies. And especially after this deadline, the Dodgers did what they needed to at the at the deadline, and they made the moves that they needed to. The Phillies, yeah, they addressed the bullpen. They lost a few pieces being traded to Baltimore. I know that in Sir, uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez and um, Gregory Soto. But, you know, I would have liked to see a big power move made by Dave Dombrowski, especially given his, his uh, track record. This is a guy who will go out, and he's not afraid to trade for guys. He's not afraid to give up big prospects or or you know guys in the lineup if it's going to better if it's going to better the team and that's what I would have liked to seen uh, to see from the Phillies and that did not happen now like I said that's borderline for me I don't want to put them in there but I want to give you a hot take so I'm going to do it and that's kind of where I stand on that I don't agree but I like it uh see the, I had the Phillies as one of my winners just because they were able to loft down that closer in the back of the mm-hmm. bullpen. The reason why they it. weren't in the World Series last year was because Craig Kimball vomited all over himself. And the offense went quiet. But the most part was Craig Kimball kept you from a 3-1 lead. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the chances of winning one of the next three games would have been very high. And they would have been in the World Series again. Um, so, And plus, I see a lot of Angels baseball. So I know Carlos Espinosa is going to fit right in there, and he's going to be good. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I had them as one of my winners. Another one. I'm going to have to put Kansas City in there. Kansas yeah. City's a winner for me. Michael Lorenzen, I like it. That's a middle of the rotation guy. Just won a World Series with the Rangers. I like it. Um, and my last winner, listen, I, I really don't want to put – I don't want to put the Dodgers in there. You see, it, it's 1A, 1B. I think San Diego and L.A. are both winners here. But okay. I, I, I would have to take the Dodgers just because they didn't kill their farm system. Dodgers didn't kill their farm system to get some of these guys in here. Um, and the Dodgers addressed all their needs. I'm not saying the Padres did. They solidified that damn bullpen, which they oh, might yeah. be a top – they're easily a top five bullpen in the league. San Diego. Oh, yeah. Um, but the Dodgers didn't kill their farm system to do that. Um, they, for for me, it was a B plus for the Dodgers. They got Jack mm-hmm. Flaherty. They got they brought back Nick Ahmed, Dodgers legend now. Um, they brought him back. Um, or no, Ahmed Rosario. What the hell am I talking about? They got um, Jesus. I'm all over the place here. Ahmed Rosario, Michael Kopech, which, listen, I know he's kind of not having a. He's having an okay season, but I it's like that velocity. It is, and I like it. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier, retirement, happy retirement, buddy. Um, and then um, Tommy Edmond, which I know he's hurt right now, but he's expected to come back. They solidified their starting pitching. They upgraded their starting pitching bench and the bullpen without killing the farm system, which I like that. Um, and. I uh, real quick, I do have one little note on the Dodgers of why I think they should be winners in everybody's in everybody's book, and I'm gonna say that because the guys that they acquired are likely going to be role players, right? Tommy Edmond, uh, probably Kopech's gonna go in the bullpen, I would think, um, and then Flaherty, um, and then they got like Rosario, Kevin Kiermaier, uh, guys like that. These are guys who could probably start on other teams. Yep. And that's what I think puts the Dodgers over the top. And most and of these guys are going to be coming off the bench. Exactly. That's the way I look at it. They are solidifying every single part of this team. Their bench are their bench is filled with guys who will start on other teams. That's what puts the Dodgers ahead for me. And obviously the Dodgers are a powerhouse. We saw that the entire offseason when they went and got Otani and then just basically put superstars at every single position. Um, And that's how you get the freedom of acquiring guys with your prospects who would start on other teams but now are on your bench. And that's what really puts the Dodgers over the top for me at this deadline Um, just because of that reason. I I, I think that's such such a power move. Um, by the Dodgers, and I think it's it's so it's just it's so Dodgers, right? We, this is things we expect from the Dodgers, and for for that reason, that's why I'm putting them as winners, and I think they should be winners in everybody's book. I agree. Uh, I like this. This is a lot of Dodger love out here. I like this. Um, <laughs> I can get used. To it. I can get used to this. Um, You want to okay, go yeah, actually, or what, what I, I want to I wanna go a, a, a quick route because I have a guy in mind for this. Who was your biggest surprise this deadline to be traded? Kind of came out of nowhere. Maybe a little bit of a shock to you. I got to go through these names again. Um <laughs> And I thought about it earlier too, when you asked mm-hmm. me this. Um, damn, man, you really put me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. I mean, I do have mine. If you need a little bit of time. Yeah, l- l- let me hear yours first. Okay. 
So the big one that sticks out to me is uh, Eloy Jimenez. I that that was a shock. I didn't expect him to be traded. Uh, I get it of why he was traded, but still a little bit of a shock to me. Um, and then I really think Jorge Soler just that one caught me so off guard, especially when we when we received the details on that trade and saw that Atlanta was taking over that entire contract. I think that's just, <laughs> those are things that we really don't see. Um, you know, and especially because it's not like Jorge Soler is not producing this year. You know, he's, he's giving them a solid at bat. Um, and with the amount of money he's making and for Atlanta to take that on, uh, obviously bringing him back and we all know what he did in Atlanta. Um, but that that really that threw me. I didn't expect to see him at all. I mean, I, I didn't expect Christopher Morrell to get traded. I really didn't. That was, yeah. I don't know. I didn't expect him to be in the part of that deal. Um, I don't know if I just haven't been paying attention or, but I did not expect him to get traded. I thought he was. If he was going to get traded, I thought it would be maybe in a couple, like in a year or two. I didn't think it would be now. Man, did they yeah. cut the core on him so quickly. Um, yep. I guess that was probably the biggest one. Okay. In that, um, uh, in, per- in that Paredes trade. I didn't expect Christopher Morrell to get moved. Exactly. I That was another one that kind of shocks me because I thought if they were going to trade him, it was going to be like him as the headliner, not Isak Paredes being the headliner. Right. Because um, I, I, definitely, I, I definitely thought Morrell was a building point in that Cubs team. Um, you know, especially with that with that young core they have, and then bringing in Paredes too. Just that was definitely another one for me. Cubs said they were sellers, and then they're retooling for next year. Kind of. I like what they did, but so did I. Yeah, but it was it was they weird. Completely fooled everybody. I wasn't expecting that. I thought they were gonna have I a was fire not sale. Either. Couldn't agree more. I I, I um, thought I part of me thought Bellinger was gonna be on his way out, but so did I. There's a lot of Dodger fans again. Can we get him? No, we're not getting him. <laughs> we're the reason why he's not here anymore. Um, let's do your Yankees. Just oh boy. you want to do it on the, you want to do it on the deadline, or you want to do it on this past weekend. Your call. We'll 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 stick with the theme here. Uh, we'll go deadline. So, for me personally, I mean, not many people might put them as losers, but for me, I'm putting them as a loser at the deadline. Um, I have the, I got the full list here. Uh, it wasn't much, so I won't take up much of your time here. Um, coming in, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Mark Leiter Jr., um, and Yel De Los Santos, Kelly Austin, and international free agent money. Going out, Jemai Jones, J.D. Davis, Caleb Ferguson, Augustine Ramirez, Jared Cerna, Jack Neely, Ben Cowles, and Abraham Ramirez. I like that they didn't unload the farm, right? I like that we still have the top guys intact in Jason Dominguez, uh, Roderick Arias, George Lombard Jr., Spencer Jones, guys like that. However, the guys that they brought in, I like Jazz, especially after the last few few games. I, I think he's going to fit in well here. I didn't like it at first, I will say that. Mm, um, okay. I didn't. This is, I thought to myself, oh, just another guy who strikes out a ton, um, who can't really stay uh, healthy. And a guy who, yeah, kind of a little bit. And then uh, a guy who doesn't fill one of our needs. You know, I was expecting, you know, more infield help. And Jazz hasn't played short or second in a long while. He's played center field mostly. And now the Yankees plan on using him at third base, which he had his first career start there last night. He looked good. And everything I've seen from him so far, I like. But at the time, I didn't like it. And I'm sure... I'm sure that curve is going to flatten as this, you know, a few months come. Um, I do like um, Lighter Jr. Um, I like that move for the bullpen. But past that, 
De Los Santos has a above four ERA, um, and then the other two are just prospects. I don't. I it, listen. It's a it's a Soto walk year, and you mean to tell me your biggest name is Jazz Chisholm Jr.? I mean, come on. There's got to be more help than this. I wanted Jack Flaherty. That's what would have pushed my deadline over the top for my Yankees. We needed a starter in there, and we didn't get one, and that's what irritates me the most. Um, Garrett Cole is uncertain right now. He's not looking like himself. Marcus Stroman has not looked good. Nestor Cortez certainly has not looked good. Carlos Rodon had last good three starts, give or take. Um, and then Luis Gill is kind of middle of the road as well. This is a rotation that I do not feel comfortable with going into October, um, especially as of right now. Um, there's a lot of veteran guys in this rotation. I think if they can turn it around, it will make me feel a little bit better. Um, but as of now, this this rotation is what's losing us games. And the rough stretch that the Yankees are in right now, that's, that's the main reason, is because of this rotation. And that was your biggest need. And the Yankees did absolutely nothing to address it. Oh, and they also brought in Brett Phillips, which I think just brings this full circle for me. As a pitcher, by the way, um, I think that's Pumping just... 97. Hey, listen, maybe we'll throw out Game 7, Brett Phillips on the fucking mound. Why not? Um, but no, when, when it comes down to it, this team needed to be all in. And that means not, not keeping your quote-unquote untouchable prospects. If that means having to give up Spencer Jones and Jason Dominguez for a guy like Crochet or a guy like Scooball, then you do it, especially in a year like this. You know, Soto is not guaranteed. I say it all the time. And this deadline was make or break, and it didn't work. And it's just another, I don't know why I keep putting faith in Cashman. Um, but, hey, it's, uh, it's not fun. I, I don't like what the Yankees did. Um they needed to do more, and they didn't. And I think the biggest reason for that is because this is supposed to be an all-in year. This is a year you're supposed to take Judge and Soto to the World Series. And the confidence in that is not very high right now. Um, so we'll see where it goes. But, you know, the Yankees made their bed. They now have to lie in it, and we'll see where it goes. I don't mean to pile on here, but uh, Gleyber Torres just made another error, too. Jesus, man. I saw the last two. What the hell? And you have two completely different tones. You have Jazz Chisholm who comes in here and says, you need me to play outfield, you need me to play third base shortstop, I just want to win a championship, whatever you want. And then you have Gleyber yep. Torres says, no, I'm the second baseman. I only play second. Wow. Yeah, which, hey, listen, I'm... I know he wasn't known for his you... defense, but Jesus. <laughs> yeah. He uh, well, he is getting known for his defense now, and it's not a, it's, it's yeah, not for, for a good the wrong reason. reason. He is consistently making errors at second base, and you know, Glaber Torres holds a very special place in my heart. Everybody knows that. Absolutely. However, I I can't be biased and say just because you know of the interactions that I've had with Glaber, that doesn't change anything. You know, I have to look forward to this team. And he is not helping the team win. This is the second trade deadline that he has, you know, survived, and he's still here. Um, but I don't see that happening in the future. I see him walking in free agency. I don't see the Yankees continuing with him, um, especially when you just got Jazz. You know, this, this is a guy who could play second, short, or th obviously now third. And he's also coming in with the energy that we want. He wants to be here. He wants to play here. And he's willing to learn an entirely new position just to help the team win. And then the comments with Glaber the other night saying, oh, I'm the second baseman. I'm open to third base, but I'm the second baseman. Mm, then start playing like it. Lower down on those errors and actually hike up your skirt. Run down to first base. Run them out. Start to produce with the bat. Then maybe we won't be calling for your head every single week. You know, I mean, this is... It's the same old tune with Gleyber Torres. It's all these errors, man, and it's not it's not fun. And it's becoming a laughing stock to be honest, but um no, that was a name that I expected to be moved to. I thought him and Nestor were going to be on their way out at the deadline. Um but that was only if the Yankees were going to do more and they did not. I w I would have liked to see a Jonathan India on this team. 
you know, go get Jonathan India and, you know, ship out Glaber. And then that's where Flaherty would have came in. Then you could have shipped out Cortez. Um, but obviously it didn't go that way. And we'll see where her, where the rest of this season goes. But uh, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not confident about this deadline. Glaber would have looked nice in Tiger's uniform. Sharing yeah, the infield with Javi Bias. Yeah, he would have been reunited with his uh, old friend Gio out yes. there. Um, Dodgers. I mean, like I just said, they had a they had a B plus trade deadline. Didn't look like it looked like it was going to be a C minus to a D up until like two fifty eight Pacific time. Um, just, I I hate you know I I can't. You know, the Astros, I just, I hate going over there to play games. I hate mm -hmm. it. It's just a reminder of what could have been with this franchise a couple of years ago. And then they We're in the same boat, man. Yeah. And then, at least, <laughs> and then you guys have to, well, you guys have to go to Houston every year. At least we get to go every other year. Um, mm -hmm. But how do you lose two out of three? And you blow a game when you were leading, but that's a conversation for another day. I could be here all night talking about it, but right now the key for the Dodgers, you made the moves, get everybody healthy. Get Mookie yep. Betts back in there. Um, get Yamamoto back in there. Bon voyage to James Paxton. Of course, after one of his best starts, he gets DFA'd. Um, Dodgers are not messing around. Um, who else? Bon voyage to Miguel Vargas. Sorry, I wish it would have panned out better. Uh, Ryan Yarborough, I wish we would have kept him, but he was kind of getting kind of rocked around a little bit towards the end. But um, I'm happy with the moves we made, and now you just have to get everybody healthy. And hopefully everybody gets healthy and we can have a postseason run here. But um, And also, too, before we get out of here, um, Freddie Freeman is currently not with the team right now because one of his kids is in the emergency room. I guess he got sick and he has an illness or something. So thoughts and prayers to the Friedman family. I hope the kids are right. You know, of course, L.A., you know, we got some of the best places to go in the world. So I know that the Dodgers and the Friedman family are taking – I know the Dodgers are taking care of the Friedman family, and I know they're putting their kid with the best care possible, with the best doctors in Los Angeles. But just prayers to him and his family because he hasn't been with the team since – since we left L.A., he went to Houston, but then he flew back home to be with his family. So just prayers up to the Freeman family. Um, but other than that, if you don't have anything else, I think that's it. I don't think so, man. I think that's all. Yeah, um, that's it. Another trade deadline is coming gone. Season's going by fast, man. It's, we will probably it, get postseason schedules either this week or next week. Um, so... We're, we're we're now officially in the dog days of summer and the dog days of baseball. This and and it sucks because this is when you can really lose a lot of fans. This oh, is where yeah. you lose a lot of fans because by this by by this time and maybe even next week as we get into August, you have a pretty good idea of where your team stands. Hey, we're competing for a World Series. We just have to get to October. We don't know if we're going to make the postseason or not, but I'll kind of keep tuning in and out. Or you're a team like the Athletics or the Rockies or the White Sox, who you know your team's out of it. You're just counting down the weeks till your season's over. And then you have college football coming back next month. You have NFL training camp just opening up. This is where – and then this year, too, it's an Olympic year. Um, yeah. You can lose a lot of people in these next three to four weeks. In August. This is where you this is where you find where the diehards are. Exactly. This is where you find this is the where, diehards. Watching this is where we will be. One in the morning. Yes, this is where we will be. We're not going anywhere. We're still here. We will be oh, here. Yeah. We'll get through the rough month of August and we'll get ready for an exciting pennant race in September. So, uh, that's going to do it for episode 87. We'll see you next week. August. Adios.